Let's right. bring in the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, brought to you by Black Rifle Coffee, the official coffee of the Dallas Cowboys. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Happy birthday. Hell, I couldn't sleep last night. I was just thinking about all the things I was going to say this morning. Oh, oh thank you, Coach. Oh, that means so much. I appreciate what? that. Yeah, so what are you doing today for your birthday? Uh, dinner, and then I uh, I hope that uh, my Tennessee Volunteers get a big win tomorrow. I, that that would be the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the good birthday there, and then the Cowboys on Sunday, you guys get a win. Oh, there you go. Nice. Where are you going to dinner? Uh, this place called the Lost Colony in Highland Village. I don't know if you know where that is. Uh, uh, I've never no, been there. Well, cool. Well, it sounds like a heck of a spot. And Peyton's got a big decision between Mexican or Italian, Coach. Which one would you lean towards? Oh, shoot. Um, I, I, no, I, I think they're both great. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's, a, it's a matter of which you had last. So uh, yeah. if you yeah. had Mexican last, I go Italian or, or flip it. No, you can't go wrong with, with Mexican or Italian. So, Coach, we were just having this discussion about uh, Shohei Otani for the Dodgers. He had like, an incredible night last night, 6-for-6, six six, 10 RBIs, 3 home runs, 2 stolen bases, just an insane night. Is there a night from a player that you were there for coaching with or against that just stands out to you as like, oh, my, that was like the most special night I've ever seen? Um, on the field? Yeah. Oh God. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, I've, I've seen some unbelievable games, you know, by Aaron Rodgers. You know, just you know, five, six touchdown type games. But um, yeah, um, not, nothing jumps to mind as far as the opponent, you know. But uh, no, I, I, I'm sorry, but that, that what he's doing is, is off the charts. I mean, that's, it's unbelievable. It's the year that he's having. Fifty fifty. Yeah. Fifty fifty. Yep. Fifty fifty. Yeah. First. Baseball. Unheard of. Yes. Hey, Coach, um, obviously the Ravens are coming in here desperate at 0-2. What struggles uh, have you seen from them on tape that has them winless so far? Well, I just think it's, um, you know, they, they you know they didn't finish the game um, against, uh, against the Raiders. You know, obviously they, you know, if you just look at the last three series of the games, you know, or deep, of the game against the Raiders, you know, the three, three and outs, and then, uh, you know, the Raiders went down and scored three times. So I, you know, this this is an excellent football team. I mean, it's you know it's still the team that uh, was competing to go to the Super Bowl last year. So, and I, I think it's also the reality of, of September football. You know, and I, I understand the records, um, but you know we're preparing for the team that's been on tape. You know, as far as the first two weeks, but also you know we spent a bunch of time on particularly their players. You know, last year obviously they've had a lot of change in their coaching staff, uh, but you're talking about a system and a profile and a program uh, that that's been in place for for decades yeah. so uh, that's what we're really we're, we're really focused on as far as getting ready to go win this game you know watching them and and seeing Lamar and and all that he you know all the problems he presents is is he probably the most difficult guy to game plan against just because you don't know what he's going to do on any given play absolutely uh, I think when you got a impact player, you know, like Lamar is, you know, that has the ball in his hands every single play and, um, you know, and has the diversity, you know, starting A with just the time clock of their plays, you know, because, I mean, there's obviously when you design a play, there's a time clock to it, but his off his off tempo and extended time clock is, is probably, probably going to be the biggest challenge we see all year. Uh, so his ability to extend plays and then, you know, unfortunately, uh, for us is when he, when he does, when he pulls the ball down and, and runs, he's, he is a dynamic runner too. So, and you know, he still has the ability to stay on the move and make, you know, make the 50, 60 yard throws. Um, so this, this is a big challenge for our defense. Coach, do you remember what you thought about him coming out of Louisville and, and what's your core philosophy on changing a guy too much? You know, the, the big Lamar discussion has always been, all right, or, or Mike Vick even, uh, Try to have him run less to preserve him, you know, become better as a pocket passer, or are you just taken away from what makes that player truly special and unique? Like, what's your philosophy on the dual impact guy and maybe trying to save some of the wear and tear? Well, I mean, I, I remember the draft because, you know, that was the draft class of, you know, Baker Mayfield, Josh Allen, and Sam Darnold and, and, that, and that bunch. And, you know, the conversation that uh, Ted Thompson and I had was, and I forget where we were picking that year, but you know he was he he was what we labeled as the you know the X factor uh, mm. in that group uh, because you know at Louisville he played for Bobby Petrino you know Bobby ran a pro style offense uh, so there was 
you know, a lot of drop back on tape um, to, to evaluate. Now, you know, we weren't, you know, looking to take a quarterback, but, you know, it was definitely a discussion that, you know, if he was down there when we picked it, it was you know, definitely a conversation you needed to have. Uh, but just extremely dynamic, um, you know, with the ball in his hand, but there definitely was enough, you know, drop back there that you could say, hey, this, this, guy can, this guy can also win from the pocket. Do you remember who you guys picked at 18? I do not. Jair Alexander. Pick? Ooh, there you go. Good, good pick. pick. Very good pick. Derwin James, Jair, Van Der Esch. Nice, yeah. nice Ooh. little cluster right there. That's, that's a good, that's a good yeah. set right there. Uh, Coach yeah. Philosoph, you know, because you got to, you got to spy on him, right? You're going to have to have. So it basically, it becomes eleven on ten. Uh, philosophically, do you, you know, do you like using your best player to spy on him, or like how how do you do that? How do you decide who to use? Well, that's that's why you game plan. Uh, so. You know, I think with with anything, you know, these are things that you put in place, uh, you know, during the off season and, and as far as training camp and train. I think you know, when the schedule, you know, you're playing the AFC North, and the schedule came out, and, and we knew we were going to play these teams early. So, I um, mean, these are things that you know we have you know, built into our, our base package. Uh, so, um, you know, it's you know, Deshaun Watson's obviously a, is a, a very active quarterback. So, I mean, it, it, these are the kind of things that we can hopefully build off of. You know schemes and, and calls that we have in place, uh, but you're, you know, you're definitely have to adjust and give him different looks because, like I said, he's he's extremely dynamic. How has he developed as a thrower, Coach? Because uh, a lot of people say, all right, he can run during the regular season. The Ravens are always going to be 11-12 wins, but it's going to take him throwing more efficiently in the postseason to advance. How have you seen Lamar develop as a thrower over the years? Well, I think the new, you know, the new offensive change has, has been good for him because I think it's, you know, it, it's given him more, you know, opportunity uh, as far as, you know, schematically from the pocket. You know, where I, I would have viewed their, you know, their offense before more run first, throw second. Uh, but I do think they have they have more balance um, if you watch them last year and, and, and this year. So, uh, you know, I think Todd Monk has done a really nice job with them. Mike McCarthy here with Sean and RJ on the DNM Leasing Hotline. Coach, right now with your football team, is, is is the bigger focus or bigger concern on your run defense or your own run game? Oh, I think it's, you know, really farm your own land, you know, clean your own house mentality. You, you, you can go through everything. I mean, we're not, you know, it's we know we know where we are and, and continue to work on them. But, yeah, definitely we're, we're, we're focused on both those this, this week as far as, you know, primary energy distribution as, as far as um, you know, things we did not practice. And, you know, you only have so much time each day on the field. And, uh, but those those will be priorities throughout the year. I mean, your, your, your run defense and run offense has to continue to grow. Uh, you know, it, it never stays the same this league. Coach, uh, we saw New Orleans get out on the perimeter last week. Is it the opposite with the Ravens when they do hand off with Henry? Are you just anticipating – more of a between the tackles battle with, with with their run game when they do hand off. I think the big key with there, you know, I mean, just watch you watch him throughout his career is, you know, his ability to get going. For you know, if he is is on the you know the outside zone, that's when he's he's so he's most dangerous. But you know, um, so how they get to the perimeter and and really you know coming off the outside zone or the pattern, you know, gap schemes where the ball has a chance to bounce. Uh, but you know, it's, it's a different run game. Clearly, uh, the you know the body types up front are different. Um, so I mean, they're they're going to come in. They're going they're going to play their game, and um, you know, it's just there's just a lot of things that they schematically and conceptually have always done. They you know, get they get on the goal line. They're going to run. They're going to run power, and so th- those are the things we're really locked into. Coach, are you guys expecting to add uh, Dalvin Cook to your attack on Sunday? Well, I mean. Good, good shot. I mean, you know, he did a nice, nice job. I mean, I don't, I don't recall ever talking about who's going to play on Sunday. Okay. On the show. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you were going to give. Oh, that's I'm, it's a birthday. I'm, it's a birthday just, present. I'm just, yeah, I'm just clouded with RJ's birthday plans. <laughs> <laughs> Not Peyton's. <laughs> Not Peyton's. Right? Oh, Mike, yeah. I, yeah, Mike, I, I just can't believe. I, I'm going to know why I didn't get invited to dinner. I'm, that's for it. That's uh, my Oh my gosh! Uh-huh. There you go. You want to come? Come on to dinner. Let's go. All no, right. It's not, too, not too late. I already got plans. <laughs> you would have been picking up the check anyway. Yeah, Trust that's, me. That's going true. Out no, no doubt. Yeah, no doubt. That's one hundred percent true. No doubt. Uh, Mike McCarthy, the Jonas here, one hundred and five through the fan. Okay, the trend around the league: first couple of weeks, you know, points are down a little bit, and I know it's early. It's it basically first couple of games of the year now have become 
extended preseason, but has running the ball become cool again? Has it become cool? <laughs> yeah, like, you know, it's, it's, it's a new thing. You know, <laughs> we love the passing game. Passing was all the rage, and now it seems like running the ball is the thing to do again. Well, I, I think it's like anything. You're trying, you're trying to establish things and – you know, at this, at this time of year with, with your team. And then, you know, off off of the run game comes half of your passing game, especially, you know, in the majority of your passing game in the first and second down. So, you know, I, I look at the touchdowns being down, and, you know, I could just only go off of our experience. You know, you, you have certain opportunities to take the shots at the end zone. And, you know, when you hit them, that, that's when you're you're scoring the touchdowns and, and your numbers are up. Um, you know, we, we haven't hit ours in, in the first two weeks. Coach, Mel Kuyper Jr. said on ESPN yesterday that the NFL should outlaw the two high safeties because it's killing the downfield passing attack. First of all, would you support that? Second of all, mm-hmm. is that tr- is that really a major reason why downfield passing is just not what it was maybe, you know, a handful of years ago? No, I, I, don't, I don't believe that at all. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the Steelers' defense of the 70s played cover two, you know. And no, I, I, I think it's just like anything. Our league's about trends, and um, always has been. And you know, and whether it's more too high or too shallow with the quarters, or too high with the, you know, deeper cover two concepts, and you know, a one high whether it's man or the, the match concepts that's that's popular now. And I, I, yeah, I, I think it's, you know, it's plus. There's only been two games. I mean, <laughs> we're, we're we're in week three, and, and we're gonna make make this comments like that yeah i don't agree with that uh coach is mozzie the the biggest um injury concern that you guys are trying to address before sunday compared with ferg and lamb and Diggs, which you seem to say a couple of days ago wasn't a major concern is, is mozzie the one at the top of y'all's list um no i i think just really how they all come in today i i you know everything was um moving forward yesterday when when we left here last night so um you know i'm I'm very hopeful that they're all going to play. Um, so, but you know, this is this is a key day. You know, just the way this is set up. You know, yesterday was a was a you know was a rough practice, and uh, you know, it was pads, and you know, we went inside because of the heat. So, you know, they, we really got after it yesterday. So, we'll see how the guys come in today. Well, uh, try to catch up on some sleep that you lost last night. Waiting for the birthday invites. Uh, apologies <laughs> from the two guys, and uh, best of luck all this right. weekend. All right, man. You guys have a great weekend.